Today on The Breakfast, Nigerians across the country will again head to the polls to choose who governs the affairs at the state level and their representatives at the various houses of assembly. Now, what should be the expectations of Nigerians? Also on The Breakfast, we'll also be talking sports with the sports journalist, Monday Thomas. Don't forget to we'll also be looking through today's newspapers and analyzing the biggest stories of the day. We call it Off the Press. Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful uh, Friday morning. Yes, I'm very correct. And it's good to know that you're on the other side of a divide. And it's also great to know that uh, I hope you're getting ready, you know, to go cast your votes uh, tomorrow. So it's the eve of the elections. My name is Messi Ebopo. The lineup's quite interesting this morning. We ask that you sit back, relax, as we uh, have a very great and nice time. Now, don't forget, you can also engage with us uh, on our various social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram with Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa. As always, we start off our conversation with what's making the rounds. What are people talking about? Now, first on the list is that, you know, church members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church have decided to sue INEC as well as the president, the attorney general of uh, the Federation, for fixing elections on Saturday. So uh, at the Federal High Court in Abuja, it was actually on Wednesday uh, that was fixed. Actually, it's been fixed May uh, the 22nd to hear a suit seeking to stop the conduct of the elections and examinations on Saturdays. Now listed as defendants in the suit are the president, like I mentioned earlier on, the Attorney General of the Federation, the Independent National Electoral Commission, and the Minister of Internal Affairs uh, also. Uh, now you also find out the defendants were the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board, National Examination Council, that's the West African Examination Council, and National Business and Technical Examination Board. The plaintiff, this is what they are seeking for. Seeking an order to restrain the fifth to the eighth respondents from scheduling and conducting compulsory public examinations on Saturdays. Now, don't forget that, I mean, if you remember vividly, JAM is always on Saturday. Uh, most of these examinations are Saturday. Everything is always on Saturday. Without making an option for members of the Seventh Day Adventist Church to take their exams uh, on the days on that particular day other than Saturday. So uh, when we talk about religion, it's quite sensitive, right? It's a very sensitive subject. And really, I never even thought about this and uh, you know how these persons actually feel. We live in a society that's very dynamic, uh, Nigeria, in terms of our tribe, religion. You have different religion and practices. But we're also hoping that the government of the day will be able to accommodate you know, all of this uh, uh, divergent personality in terms of re religion and what have you and uh well however fingers are crossing let's see how that pans out uh, let's see what becomes of it especially the hearing in may uh, one would have actually said that oh the court was supposed this is happening at a time where we are uh, supposed to have an election on uh the 18th of march now don't forget the election was supposed to be on the 11th of march but do they really have a valid concern? Are their concerns really valid? And what do you make of this? Are they expected to make sacrifices? And well, we, we hope that we have a system that accommodates and tolerates and we also have a system that people would understand, you know, the business of governance and what have you. That's the much I can say at this point in time. Now to the next one, which involves uh, the governor of Lagos State donating 100 million naira to the uh, care marketers. Now, don't forget that the Lagos State governor, Babaji Songwulu, had uh, donated, of course, it happened on Wednesday, yesterday, I beg your pardon, 100 million naira to traders uh, of that market, the Bond Accra uh, Motor Parts and Allied Dealers Association in a Jigule area of the state. Uh, the governor, Songwulu, also laid the foundation of a new market building. Now, speaking during his visit to the bond site of the market, 
The governor of Lagos State was quoted to say uh, that the donation was part of efforts by the Lagos State government to help alleviate the plights of traders who lost goods and cash in the fire when the market got burnt last week. Now, remember that the governor had also said that uh, it was like a promise. He would come back. So he came back. That's nothing that's very common you know, around us. When you say something, do you do what you say? And that's where the issue of integrity comes. So apparently, the governor leaves up to his expectation. He said he will return, and he did, uh, immediately to support the people who were affected by the unfortunate incident. So, but he's also said, because I know that in your thoughts right now, uh, in the conversation that a lot of Nigerians are talking about, is that, oh, it's a political season. This is politically motivated. Oh, it's because it's a campaign. Now, whether or not it's politically motivated, the most important thing is that, you know, these persons have actually gotten support. And that's very, very important. So he said, just before you think out loud, that... This is not politics, it's just a coincidence that it's a political season. And so whatever action, whatever government does and, you know, whatever government decides to do and do not do will be tagged as uh, politicking. So I, I like to quote him. I'm happy to be here to lay the foundation for the new market building. Now it's a story building and a small composition that will alleviate the suffering and the loss of our traders. I, he also said that it is for us to make a clear stand that we're not about ethnicity or religious uh, division. And that's what the governor was quoted to say. And, you know, that's a very brilliant statement. But however, like I said, whether or not it, it has to do with, you know, politicking and you begin to say, oh, it's about the politics. The most important thing is that these persons have actually received support. And I hope that that uh, 100 million will go a long way in helping them, you know, to rebuild their businesses. Because uh, you don't want to go to a fire incident, especially the markets. I've seen a lot of traders. I've witnessed that. I've actually reported that story. And, you know, it's not a site you want to be, you know, around. Especially at a time where a lot of people are still very conventional. You ha still have the unbanked. People keep cash in the markets, in the market space. And when this fire incident happens, it takes everything entirely. So, yes, it's a plus. Whether it's politically motivated or it's not politically motivated, the governor himself has put out a statement as to the fact that it's just a coincidence. So, you know, that's something to go by. But it's also important that we look at the essence because every other time you have a fire incident, there are two things involved. Is there an accident or is it an arson? And when you talk about an arson, it means that someone is responsible for that fire. It's a deliberate effort, so it's not an accident that an element or you know group of persons are responsible for that fire incident. Now, in this case, it's been you know it's been alleged that this fire didn't just happen. It's not an accident. It was a just a deliberate effort of uh, you know some persons, uh, very associated with a political party. To be very precise, uh, the allegation is that the APC. Uh, is responsible for this. Their thugs are responsible for this because of the outcome of the presidential elections uh, result in Lagos State, and that's why that happened. So I think that the governor also should also be bent on ensuring that those who are responsible, even though, I mean, the police officers in Nigeria, the Nigerian police, I don't think you need a reminder to do your job, but uh, if this is what's happening, the governor should also be interested in ensuring that those who, I mean, if it's an arson, that's the allegation, that we get to the bottom of this, what was responsible for this incident. If it's an arson, those who are responsible should be arrested and be brought to book, made to face the law. That's it, okay? But um, as we progress, another on the top trending is the fact that Nigerians are talking about the censors. Yeah, I saw a post where there's been a calculation of what will happen to the Nigerian student, those who are in the university, uh, the postponement, I mean, the fact that the elections have been moved from 11 to the 18, that's tomorrow. And then you also have the fact that there will be holidays, the census will come. There also will be uh, Easter holiday in April. The Ramadan would also be there. It would just, just be a lot of holidays right there. So um, there's been a postponement uh, which was announced on Wednesday by the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, where a lot of persons have asked, where is Lai Mohammed? But he's speaking now. 
uh, after the weekly Federal Executive Council meeting in the FCT. Now, he said that the decision to shift the census was necessitated by the postponement of the governorship and state assembly elections by the Independent National Electoral Commission, that's INEC, from the 11th of March to the 18th of March. The exercise, of course, you already know, was scheduled uh, to hold for the 29th of March. That's the census. Will not, not take place, will now take place, I beg your pardon, in May, but with no specific date that's been given. So, however, the minister also disclosed that uh, the council had approved 2.8 billion naira for the National uh, Population Commission to procure a software for the census. Apparently, it feels like, you know, that's the reason why uh, uh, the date was moved, apart from the previous, because we also have Lai Mohammed. In some quarters, they're saying, hey, the reason why that was moved is that uh, you have the commission trying to secure an extra phone. If you look at what originally uh, it's been stipulated to be uh, the fee or the amount for the conduct of the election, and then now you have the fact that there's also a need for extra 2.8 million, if I'm not mistaken, then uh, tongues are already wagging. Nigerians are talking about it, and uh, it's a lot to grapple with. But this is the point where we take a break and then... Uh, join G.D. Johnson on the other side of the divide to be uh, part of Off the Press. Please stay with us. Good morning.